Hello everybody, how is it going? So, we're actually playing Whitebeard. I think I'm gonna, for the rest of the week, probably upload mostly Whitebeard. Just kind of want to bounce between this deck and Law. Uh, we have a interesting matchup. I know a ton of people are always talking about Arlong, how he's better than a lot of people think he is. And uh, I think this, this match definitely shows that um, he is pretty solid, honestly. Cannot disrespect him. But turn one with Izo pick up, I believe we grab the Whitebeard Pirates, and then we, this turn, we'll play it, pick up an ace, sounded good to me, we'll just swing for seven, and then pass it back to him, pick up another Izo off our life, he'll go three Dawn on Sanji, attack us for six, that's kind of good for me, because that just means he isn't using leader effect this turn, I feel like those, uh, the little guys, like, uh, mainly Sanji, but even, like, Brooks, and, um, like, buggies, will, like, where, like, you will swing with them against, like, 5k leaders just gets so much worse against Whitebeard, which is, uh, definitely a benefit of, you know, playing Whitebeard. Pretty much everything, you know, you're gonna play other than your blocker Marco is gonna be 6k or above, so it's always gonna be kind of taxing to swing into them. It's funny, when, uh, you hit, like, your 9 down turn on Whitebeard, most of the time I'll, like, let my 5 cost Marco go, or I just won't swing with them, and then if I have, like, a thatch, it'll be, like, my thatch is rested, and my leader. <laughs> it's like you can only swing eight. It's like for that turn, you're just a eight drop kid. And then, uh, you know, if you can keep doing that, you're just an eight drop kid for the majority of the later game, which is kind of crazy. But he'll play a pudding. He grabs a cracker, and then he'll use his leader effect to play the cracker. I'll 2k out of the 7k hit. Plays another Sanji. Very interesting. I don't have another five drop Marco to get rid of it, though. So it's fair. I think this turn, because this should be my 7 down turn, I really want to find a white beard. So we'll play the Izo, and we do find one. I didn't see any in the first uh, white beard pirate, so I assumed that it was pretty likely I'd find one. And we could like establish a blocker Marco this turn, because um, he, uh, he'd be able to res himself, because I'll be taking my third life. But uh, I like to just get a bit more aggressive and leave some dawn up for my two guard points. So I got three dawn on my Izo. Attack for 5, he'll 1k out of it. We'll swing for 6 with our Marco. He'll take, maybe got a trigger, no he did not. And then we'll attack for 7 with our leader. And he will elect to 2k and 1k out of that a hit. Fair enough. So we're back to even, so it's not like the Cracker is going to get uh, his double attack or anything like that. And we grab an Atmos off life. We really want to defend. We can take one hit. I'm always okay with taking one hit. But uh, we don't want to go down to zero before we play our nine cost. Sometimes you can. But um, being on zero when you're playing the nine cost on your nine dawn turn feels a little bit risky to me. But if you're on your ten dawn turn and you have like a one cost, you know, radical beam or guard point, it feels pretty safe. We'll go three down on Sanji. We'll, uh, we'll counter out of that. A little trade is putting into my Izo, that's fair. Goes one Dawn on Cracker. Attacks my Marco for six. We'll probably just chuck a uh, blocker Marco because we don't really need two. Goes three Dawn on Leader. Uses this effect, I would imagine. Plays another Cracker. Attacks me for eight, very interesting. Figured he'd go after the Marco again, but I will guard point out of that pretty easily. And uh, I'll swing my Izo into uh, his pudding. Attack my Marco into the Sanji. Could have left it, you know, not rested, but I wanted to try to clear the majority of his board. If he starts, you know, bullying the Marco, I'm definitely just going to let it go. So I don't have to defend the 6k rather than the 8k. And uh, he lets the Cracker go as well. So he only really has two swings this turn. So we're guaranteed alive, but swinging into an 8k... Leader is not easy. It's not easy. Probably goes for... Definitely clears the Izo, I would imagine. With something. And then just tries to bully the Marco. Goes 3 down on Cracker. And swings at my Marco for 8. Kind of interesting. He decides to still swing for 8 against the Marco. I feel like it's always worth just swinging 6 at it. Because no matter what, you'll get a card. Goes 8 again. At my Marco, 
we'll have to let him go. I didn't feel too bad about, you know, defending that first Marco just because he actually invested the 3 Dawn to swing at the Marco. But if he was just planning to go 6 at it, I definitely wouldn't have uh, rezzed it or anything. This turn, we'll play our Ace. I think I definitely kind of mess up this turn. I probably... I think I end up minusing the Shachi and the Cracker. And I think I should have minus the Pair of Sparrow and the Cracker and left the Shachi at, you know, his normal attack. Just because uh, he actually gets value out of his blocker. Well, honestly... I definitely could have just like swung 12 with Whitebeard first. <laughs> so I don't know, I think I just maybe misordered it. Probably go like 12 at life with uh, Whitebeard. KO the block here. This outcome like wasn't too bad either, just cause um, our Izo, you know, still killed something. So it's not terrible. Yeah, we'll go 6 at the Cracker, he lets it go. We'll swing our Ace at his leader. And uh, he takes. Gets a, another pair of Sparrow Trigger. So this is uh, <laughs> a little bit scary. Um, I maybe should have considered like not playing the Ace this turn. But it kind of felt like too good of a turn not to play him. So I ended up doing it. And uh, this play kind of risky. Because I ended up dropping you know a 2k to kill one of the pair of Sparrows. But I figured it's kind of the same thing. It's probably just correct to deal with one of the pair of sparrows this does tap me out though so if I hit like an event off life it's kind of scary so we'll play the Otama give our last suit on to a new gate attack for 12 at lead KO the pair of sparrow and uh, yep he gets another trigger plays down the Kurobi and we pick up a wipe your pirate so <laughs> not the event I was thinking of but we don't have a lot of counter, so this is definitely kind of scary. <laughs> Goes um four dawn on his Kurobi. Bit of a weird number, but we'll 2k out of it. Goes two dawn on Parasparrow, and uh, we will counter out of that as well, and we should pretty much be safe. I think uh, he <laughs> said something like, all oh, these are bad numbers to attack with, and I was like, yeah, I definitely should have gone either one Dawn less on the Kurobi and just swing for six, or like, at least one Dawn more on the Paro Sparrow to swing for eight. Yeah, he mentions it here, he attacked. Not the best there. But yeah, it goes four Dawn on his lead, attacks for nine, I'll take. Yeah, if he had some better numbers, uh, <laughs> this game, we probably lose. But uh, he says bye. <laughs> I didn't have time to say GG or anything, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys.